Let me just say that it's our honor to declare this Michael Keaton Day in Hollywood. Thank you. Hey, hey, thanks, thanks, thanks. Look, it's kind of warm. I just want to say thank you. What do you say we call it a day? Thank you. Um, you're all, most of you are probably s sitting there looking at me right now in his sport coat, thinking to yourselves, did he win the Masters? <laughs> um, I don't know where to start. All these notes I took are kind of uh, useless because uh, I, I'm just going to start speaking and not refer to these if I can, even though I will have to when it comes to thanking the uh, enormous amount of people I have to thank so that I try not to forget anyone. Thank you. I'm going to keep this very short and sweet uh, because that's kind of the order of the day and it's uh, about 95 degrees outside. I have so many stories that I think about that that's a lot of them have to be left for another time because we just don't have the, have the time today. Um, when you hear the people, uh, the other reason I'm going to make it short and throw these out is when you listen to all these people say these tremendously wonderful things about me, those are several of the things I was going to say myself, so <laughs> we really don't have to. I could have sh saved you all a lot of time and trouble. Um, it's embarrassing. Uh, I, where I grew up and how the way I grew up, uh, this speaking about yourself or uh, uh, talking about yourself to any degree really was kind of frowned upon. And I, I, it's so embarrassing to me in a way, um, I'm embarrassed that I'm embarrassed. Uh, so to uh, listen to what's said about you and to feel at all like you deserve this is just not the way I've ever thought. I, I, I was told something years ago by some guy who was very wise who said, people always talk about what we deserve. I may have been whining, I'm not sure. I may have been complaining about something. So he listened to me and he said, people always talk about what they think they deserve. And he said, however you interpret her or him or it, he said, really only God knows what you deserve. You really don't know what you deserve. And where I come from, or at least in my mind, You'd be a good parent, you'd be a good friend, a good husband, a good pal, a good actor. That's what you're supposed to do. You don't get extra credit for being those things. That's the job. That's what you're supposed to do. And I'm just never going to see it any other way other than that. Before I go farther, though, I, I really have to take, take a minute here and, and, and thank a whole bunch of people. Leron and Anna, thank you very much for this. The LAPD especially in a time when things are really, really tough right now. Thank you. You guys have been great. <clears throat> um, I'm going to throw this in, whether people like it or not. My friend Michael Jordan just do made a huge donation in terms of police and uh, minority communities. And I got to tell you, I'm going to thank him myself. And I don't care if people say it took too long for him to, did it, to do it. The fact is, he did it. Um, the city of Los Angeles, thank you. Uh, the state of California, thank you. You know, you move here, and uh, I really started in Pittsburgh and technically in New York, but I've lived here, and this state and this city has provided so much for me, not to mention the industry, which with all its criticism that people like to throw around, I've always found the entertainment industry to be mostly open-hearted, oh, big, big-hearted, open-minded, and generous. And uh, while I kind of keep one foot outside the uh, business to have some sort of normalcy, um, I'm really appreciative of everyone who's ever helped me out, and there have been a whole lot of people who have done that. Um, I want to thank somebody who never, uh, um, a whole bunch of folks, somebody who never gets mentioned is my, my assistant, Natalie. <laughs> My housekeeper of 34 years, Vilma. <laughs> Obviously my family, John, I don't know what to say, but man, it's this guy great to work with. Uh, the Sean man, my kid, what a good kid I have. Wow. <laughs> um, ICM, anonymous content, uh, Weinsteins, uh, Tony Howard specifically, Willie Tanner, 
uh, Wendy and Matt and uh, Skip. I don't know if Skip's here. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to get everybody. Uh, I hope that I hope hit most of you. I can't tell you how much I, I appreciate this. Um, when I, every time I come to this area, the, one of the first memories I ever had, I didn't have a car for a long time. I, I couldn't afford a car. I couldn't afford anything. But my brother Paul, who barely had any money himself, sent me, I think, a, just about a, a $150 or just to make enough so I, by the time I scraped together what I had, I could buy a Volkswagen from a guy up here for like $600. And that, but until I had that car, I, I got around on the bus or I walked. And often I walked in this kind of weather. And I one time had to take a, uh, uh, I had a gig, I was doing stand-up, I was doing, I was taking acting class, but I had a gig, and I had to time it, this was at night, I had to time it, man, there are so many of these stories, I had so many stories that I can't tell, but here's one that I can, I would, I would leave by bus, and I knew I had to time it to go all the way down, way past, like down past Paramount somewhere, in some little street, I don't even remember the street, but way, 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 and I lived almost, literally, almost in Pacoima, that's not a joke, I was like, not in the valley, I was like in Chartier's Valley, I was so far away, and I, and I had to go on, and the times were never right, I showed up at this little club that seated about 11 people, and there was no mic, there was no, there was no, I was doing stand-up at the time. And I had to get there by, like, I went on at, at, at something like 9.30 at night or something like that. And I had to hurry up and blow through my set in about two and a half minutes. Meanwhile, I had about a minute and a half worth of material. So two and a half minutes, I was stretching it already. And I had to run out the door and run out the street to catch a bus to a bus to a bus, my line, all the way over Laurel Canyon to a bus. And then I had to walk all the way to Sherman Way from Laurel Canyon, from Laurel Canyon. Thank God it wasn't hot, it was at night. That's, that's what you do when you have to do what you wanna do. Um, the last thing I'll say, because I've already gone on too long, is I never ever, to, to say this is a dream is kind of incorrect because I really never thought about being famous. It's not something I really thought of. It sure is fun, but that's not the thing I really thought of. I always wanted to be good. That's all I really ever wanted to be, was good at what I did. And honestly, to tell you the truth, I'm, I, I think sometimes I am. And sometimes I think I'm pretty damn good. But all I really think about, <laughs> but when I go to work, I just say, I just want to be good. I want to see how good I can get. And that's the great thing about my job, is that that's a never ending uh, a quest. And, uh, I said this before at the Eastman Awards, and I'd say this to kids who are thinking about getting into the business, but I'd also say it to kids who want to do something in life that helps other people and shows respect and gets you your, your own self-respect and, and shows respect for other people no matter what you do, especially when we consider what's going on now. And if there's anything you can do to treat one another better, when you ask yourself the question, why me? Really ask yourself the question, why not me? Because anybody can do that. And we got all pulled together now, folks, because this is an important time. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Really, this is, this is pretty tremendous. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.